Can you just uh, explain to us uh, what Super Schools Rugby is? Okay, Super Schools Rugby is actually a 15 aside uh, uh, schools rugby tournament. Um, the reason why we choose 15 aside instead uh, because we we found out that uh, there are many sevens and tens uh, tournaments being held uh, nationwide, particularly uh, because uh, maybe it's much easier to organize. It can be concluded in two or three days. But 15 aside rugby, we require a longer uh, period uh, whereby teams need to play and rest uh, before coming back for another match. Yeah. Right. So uh, I think we for for schools we have the MSSM competition, the national uh, schools competition. Yeah. So uh, how how do you uh, prepare this uh, super schools competition with? That? I mean, how does it complement that competition? Okay. Um, Probably this is the only 15 aside uh, schools tournament outside MSSM at the moment. Um, yeah, but the difference between MSSM and uh, Super Schools Rugby, I think MSSM is uh, hosting the tournament sort of like a carnival basis uh, in four or five days, uh, whereby we are hosting, uh, especially this year's tournament, uh, within two and a half months. Mm. Yeah. So as you said just now, um, the sevens tournaments can be held over a weekend and all that. Yeah, But exactly. But for for 15s, it's it's obviously a longer duration. You can't have them playing like two three matches a day, again. Yeah. So uh, I understand. Uh, I believe it, it's a quite a significant undertaking compared to a sevens tournament. Why did you decide to go on uh, and tackle this uh, kind of events? Um, uh, again, um, the motivation is uh, uh, probably. Because we believe that 15 aside is the truest form of rugby, lah, whereby uh, rugby World Cup is played. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so in the nine years uh, since we we we've had this tournament, uh, so far, what are the highlights for you yourself? 11 years actually, uh, oh, yeah. minus two years during okay. the pandemic. Uh, this this year is the ninth edition. Uh, we started out in 2013. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the highlight is, um. We started out with six teams in 2013. Uh, we grow and we add more teams in 2017. Eight teams, uh, 2018 with um, uh, 2019 with 12 teams. Uh, just before the pandemic, and last year we uh, managed to actually concluded the the tournament with 16 teams. And this year we introduce uh, four more teams uh, for the Super Schools Rugby uh, category, and of course. Uh, having said that, I know uh, we carefully selected the 20 teams with uh, the schools with a proper ecosystem, uh, strong support from the schools, from the parents, from the alumni. Uh, at the same time, we know uh, there are school teams, uh, we sort of call them uh, rugby project schools. Mm-hmm. So we created another category category under Super Schools Rugby, uh, which is Super Schools Rugby Academy Division. So we invited this year uh, seven more teams mm-hmm. uh, which probably the top currently uh, performing uh, rugby schools mm-hmm. in Malaysia yeah how hard is it to raise half a million in sponsorship for a rugby league like that very hard very hard yeah, yeah. but um, yeah we try as much as possible to actually mm-hmm. uh, hit the bullet and and go all out to get that basically and I think um, uh, Uh, I met uh, Malaysia Rugby as well, and part mm-hmm. of the reason why they are not hosting MRL anymore because their focus is more to their uh, affiliates, which the states. So mm-hmm. that's why they are focusing more on uh, national sevens and also Piala Gong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So normally, what what are the challenges you face when trying to get sponsorship to run these tournaments? Um, again, ah, the standard mm-hmm. answer, which is no budget, um, uh-huh. um, and of course. Uh, We tried as much as possible to position this as uh, mm. uh, creating a, a brand activation for the companies as well, and not merely as corporate social responsibility for them. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what happened uh, now. Uh, whenever they sponsors, they treat this as like just like another CSR program for them. Okay. But I think it should be. I mean, we try to actually position it more than just a CSR program. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we need to actually position it as a as a brand. Mm-hmm. A potential activation space for them as well, mm-hmm. for for them to grow. Yeah. So they should see it as more of a marketing yeah. tool rather than exactly. just CSR. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. That's the. I mean, previously CSR, CSR, 
is a avenue for them to channel some funds to any programs which are which are deemed to be not really uh, no ROI on this kind of events. Yeah. Audio plus.